So in today's lecture, I will discuss the basics of a 4x4 four four matrix keypad. As a part of this lecture, first I will introduce you to the schematic of a 4x4 four four matrix keypad, the principle behind its operation and how would we practically interface a 4x4 four four matrix keypad to any any uh, device which would be like a microcontroller or uh, Arduino board, etc. That's it. Let's begin. A typical 4x4 four four matrix keypad looks like this. It's called a, a matrix keypad because it's organized into a matrix structure. It typically has a 4x4 four four, uh, matrix keypad has eight terminals which we will see it is used to give multiple inputs as you see multiple places where we can press buttons each input can have a particular significance this input is independent from this one it is quite easy to interface and it is quite easily available in the market so a typical 4x4 matrix keypad looks like this the schematic you have a total of 16 switches as we can see 4 cross 4 16 switches which are divided into a structure which has 4 rows and 4 columns like this now if you see very carefully, each row and column has a switch in between strategically placed so that one switch has the capability if pressed can short this path here. The other paths would remain open and in this schematic as you see each switch can actually generate a unique situation which we will see as part of the practical operation so again for the schematic we have four rows and four columns 16 switches connected in a in a matrix structure so let's understand the principle behind this. So for example, let me say that column one is at logic one or VDD. Column two is zero. Column three is zero. Column four is zero. Then for example, if I press switch one, then only row 1 will have the path and I will see row 1 go up to VDD or 5 volts. On the other hand, if I press say switch 6, I will see that row 2 comes to 0. Now if I have information of both the rows and the columns, then together I can deduce or calculate which switch is pressed. Okay, it's a fairly simple principle of operation. As long as I have information of what is given at the columns or at the rows, then I can figure out which switch is pressed. By the way, uh, the rows and columns are interchangeable. Means that the rows can behave like columns and the columns can behave like rows because at the end of the day, it's just a path that has to be completed. And uh, depending on how I monitor both these situations, I can figure out which switches 
pressed. So let's see how we could practically interface that. So let's say for example that this is your microcontroller or some controlling element like an Arduino or even an FPGA. If I say that I would be monitoring my rows, I monitor my rows and vary my columns. Again, let me say that uh, both the rows and columns are interchangeable. So if I'm monitoring my rows, so these would be monitored and I'm varying my columns. So for example, first I'm going to make this as 0, 1, 1, 1. Then after let's say a few milliseconds, I make this as 1, 0, 1, 1. After a few milliseconds, then I make it as 1, 1, 0, 1. And after a few milliseconds, I make it as 1, 1, 1, 0. And I keep repeating this process. And every time I vary this column structure, I, I monitor my rows. So how does that help me? For example, if I am listening on my rows, every time a switch is pressed, for example, when I am here and I press this switch, then I know that for sure that switch 1 is pressed because I know that I would get 0 at RB0 and I would get some other value here. Typically what we do is that we fix this row terminals to VDD we fix it to VDD that is at 5 volts so invariably if there is no switch pressed here all these rows will actually see a high voltage all these rows would see a high voltage which is of 5 volts now if a switch is pressed then effectively this node here would fall to 0 and then we would see a 0 volts here I know that the only situation that could be possible is switch 1 is pressed. Now a question must be that what if switch 4 would have been pressed then at that time I would have a 0 here and not here. But your question must be what if switch 5 was pressed at that time? Well I would still see a 1 but I would like to tell the audience here that we are varying the row information and the column information so fast which is in milliseconds and our human touch is at best one second at least a second or higher milliseconds that would be 500 milliseconds or so so in that we would definitely detect whether this, this switch was pressed or this switch was pressed, whichever switch is pressed, we can vary the row, the column information and detect the information on the rows. I hope this was clear that I keep varying my column information, first make this 0, then 0, then this 0, uh, cyclically or successively and depending on which switch is pressed, I will see a 0 on my respective row information either it's here or here or here or here and this is how I would use the matrix keyboard with any microcontroller FPGA Arduino or so. So that said this was just the basic introduction for a 4x4 matrix keypad. Uh, in the next lecture we will see how to use a keypad interface using whichever platform we are working on and we'll do a lab session on that. Thank you.